In this video, I'll identify both the extrinsic and intrinsic muscles of the foot and show some of their actions. I'll also identify some of the arteries and the nerves of the foot. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll begin with the anterior compartment muscles. This first muscle is the tibialis anterior. It attaches to the medial cuneiform and first metatarsal. When it contracts, it dorsiflexes and inverts the foot. The next muscle is the extensor hallucis longus. Hallucis or hallux means big toe. Sometimes hallucis can be pronounced hallucis. So this muscle extends the big toe, like this. Here you can trace the tendons of extensor digitorum longus back to the muscle belly. Extensor digitorum longus will extend the toes, which looks like this. Attaching to the base of the fifth metatarsal and running anterior or in front of the lateral malleolus, we have the fibularis tertius. This muscle is actually part of the extensor digitorum longus muscle belly, but it's been given a different name because it attaches to the base of the fifth metatarsal instead of one of the toes. Fibularis tertius dorsiflexes and everts the foot, like this. Holding all these tendons down, we have the extensor retinaculum, which crosses anterior to the ankle. Also attaching to the base of the fifth metatarsal, we have the first of the lateral compartment muscles, the fibularis brevis. This is sometimes called peroneus brevis. Peroneus actually means fibula, so to make things easier, the scientists changed the name to just say fibula. Fibularis brevis will plantar flex the foot, as well as evert the foot. Over here we have the fibularis longus muscle. Its tendon passes underneath the cuboid bone to connect to the medial cuneiform and first metatarsal, just like the tibialis anterior did. In fact, both the tibialis anterior and the fibularis longus muscle form kind of a stirrup around the foot, which is said to help support the medial longitudinal arch. Fibularis longus will also help to both plantar flex and evert the foot, like fibularis brevis did. The fibularis longus and brevis muscles are often damaged when someone suffers an inversion ankle sprain, so therapists will focus on strengthening these muscles during the rehab process to improve ankle stability. On the back of the foot, we can see the calcaneal tendon, or more commonly known as the Achilles tendon. The Achilles tendon is named after the Greek warrior Achilles. Legend has it that his mother, Thetis, who is the goddess of water, dipped baby Achilles in the river Styx to make him invincible. The problem with this is that she held him by the heel, so his heel was the only part that the magical water did not touch. This made the heel of Achilles the only part of his body that was vulnerable. It said that Achilles was killed when an arrow struck him in his vulnerable heel. Today, when someone talks about an otherwise strong person having some sort of weakness, that weakness is said to be their Achilles heel. The Achilles tendon attaches the gastric nemius and soleus muscles to the calcaneus. Here we can see some of the fibers of the soleus muscle. Both the gastric nemius and soleus will plantar flex the foot at the ankle, but remember, Gastric nemius will also flex the leg at the knee because it attaches to the femoral condyles. Posterior to the medial malleolus, we have Tom, Dick, and Bloody Nervous Harry. What? It's the mnemonic used to help one identify the structures posterior to the medial malleolus. So in order, from anterior to posterior, we have the tibialis posterior tendon, which is the closest to the medial malleolus. Next, the flexor digitorum longus tendon. Then, the posterior tibial artery, the tibial nerve, and the flexor hallucis longus tendon. This is good to know because some professors will try to see how well you know the anatomy by covering the leg and the foot and just having these structures exposed at the ankle. Then, they'll ask you to identify the tendons without being able to trace them to their origins or insertions. Now, if we remove this plate, we can see the long flexor tendons like the flexor hallucis longus. Flexor hallucis longus will flex the big toe, like this. Here we have the flexor digitorum longus tendons. They pass deep to the flexor digitorum brevis tendons and run through where the brevis splits to insert onto the distal phalanges. Flexor digitorum longus will flex the toes, like this.
This muscle here is the extensor hallucis brevis. This muscle extends the big toe. Here's the extensor digitorum brevis. You can see the fibers passing under these extensor digitorum longus tendons. Extensor digitorum brevis will extend the toes. Here we can see some of the dorsal interosseous muscle fibers. They will attach to toes 2, 3, and 4. The dorsal interossei of the foot act just like the dorsal interossei of the hand in that they will abduct the toes. Here we have the abductor hallucis. As the name implies, this muscle will abduct the big toe when it contracts. Here we have flexor digitorum brevis. We can trace its tendons up toward the toes. These tendons are very similar to the tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis in the hand in that they will split to allow another tendon to pass through and run distally. The flexor digitorum brevis will flex at the proximal interphalangeal joints, or PIPs, and metatarsal phalangeal joints, or MTPs. Here we have the abductor digiti minimi pedis. This muscle will abduct the little toe. Now if we remove this plate, here we have the quadratus planti muscle. This muscle attaches from the calcaneus to the tendons of flexor digitorum longus to ensure the toes get pulled straight back when the longus contracts. In other words, quadratus planti straightens the pull of the flexor digitorum longus tendons. Here we've got the lumbricals pedis. They attach from the deeper flexor digitorum longus tendons to the dorsal hood or dorsal digital expansions of the toes. This muscle acts like the lumbricals in the hand in that it'll flex at the MTPs or metatarsal phalangeal joints and extend at the pips, proximal interphalangeal joints, and dips, distal interphalangeal joints. Here we can see part of the flexor hallucis brevis. If we remove this plate, we can see it a little better. Here is flexor hallucis brevis. This muscle is interesting in that it has two sesamoid bones embedded in its tendons. This gives the muscle a little extra leverage when it contracts. Here you can see it helping to flex the big toe. Here we can see the cut edge of the oblique head of the adductor hallucis. Up here you can see the transverse head. This muscle will adduct the big toe when it contracts or pull it toward the midline of the foot. Here's the posterior tibial artery, running behind the medial malleolus to enter the foot. Here it's continuing as the lateral plantar artery. Branching off the lateral plantar artery is the deep plantar arch. And branching off the arch we have the plantar metatarsal arteries. Here I'm tracing the medial plantar artery. Now these common plantar digitals branch into the proper plantar digitals, or just plain plantar digitals, which bring blood into the toes. So to review, here we have the deep plantar arch. Branching off the arch we have the plantar metatarsal arteries, which will anastomose superficially with the common plantar digitals. The common plantar digitals branch into the proper plantar digitals, or just plain plantar digitals. On the dorsum of the foot we have the dorsalis pedis artery. If someone were to fracture a bone in their lower extremity or have some other pathology, the blood flow to the foot might be compromised. Checking the pulse in this artery could help to assess whether blood was still making its way to the foot or not. This blood vessel right here is the fibular artery, which supplies blood to the lateral malleolus. The superficial fibular nerve will branch into the medial dorsal cutaneous nerve and the intermediate dorsal cutaneous nerve. If I turn the model a bit, we've got a better view of the medial dorsal cutaneous nerve. Back here we have the sural nerve, giving off branches to supply the heel, and another branch, called the lateral dorsal cutaneous nerve, to supply the skin on the lateral side of the foot. Cutaneous means skin, so these nerves that have cutaneous in the name supply sensation to the skin over these regions. Here we can see, coming from the anterior compartment, the deep fibular nerve, located between the first two toes. 
Passing down the medial side of the foot, we can see the medial curl cutaneous nerve. It also sends a little branch over to the medial malleolus. Back here, if we trace the tibial nerve behind the medial malleolus and into the foot, we can see that it branches into the lateral and medial plantar nerves. Off the medial plantar nerve, we have the superficial branch that passes along the medial side of the big toe to become the proper digital nerve. The common plantar digitals also branch off the medial plantar nerve. They will branch into the proper plantar digitals, which will supply the toes. The lateral plantar nerve branches into a superficial branch, which turns into a proper digital nerve on the lateral side of the little toe. There is also a common plantar digital nerve that branches into proper plantar digitals. If we remove the plate, we can see the deep branch of the lateral plantar nerve. This will supply some of the intrinsic muscles of the foot, like adductor halysis and the inner osseae. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider clicking like and subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to turn on notifications to get alerted to all my latest videos. For more helpful anatomy and physiology study resources, visit www.humanbodyhelp.com.